What is up, Ram Nation? We have our guy, Colorado State football, intro- officially announced, I should say, Jay Norville as the next head coach of the CSU football program, poaching him from Nevada, the rare, I guess it's not super rare, but it doesn't happen too often at this level of college football. First time a Mountain West coach has ever left for another Mountain West institution to also be a head coach. Rocky Long a couple of times dipped to be defensive coordinator, but CSU with the rare interconference coach at Jay Norville, dynamite hire, uh, first black head coach in the history of the program, which I think that's a great thing. It's taken much too long for that to happen. Beyond that, it's just a brilliant offensive mind, a guy who has had a ton of success rebuilding Nevada. You know, they're not winning conference championships or anything like that, but you just you got to understand that there there were significant hurdles and the ceiling at Nevada was only so high based on their limited resources. Yeah. Obviously, that's probably why he decided to, to come to CSU in the first place. But Andre, what's your initial reaction here? Because, you know, we were kind of talking before the show, like there weren't that many guys that they could go out and get and have it be viewed as a home run. Right. I right. think he's one of those guys. Yeah, hundred percent. It really struck me as a pretty, um, yeah, real slam dunk hire, which you just don't see in college football hires, um, because you know you're almost always getting someone from another conference, or they're making a move from G five to Power five, or they're making the move from FCS to G five, or they're making that move from coordinator to head coach, or They're moving, you know, it's a head coach, but they're moving into a different region. So you have some questions in how they'll be able to adapt to recruiting, how they'll be able to sell that brand to the recruiting regions where they do their work. None of those factors that murk up predicting how a head coach will translate uh, fit with this hire um, because he is he's coming from Nevada. Uh, Norvell also has a, an extensive record as an offensive mind and a, a really stellar track record um, in working with quarterbacks. And, you know, that his stock has kind of returned very high with the work that he did with Carson Strong at Nevada. But this is a guy that's worked with um, co-OC with Sam Bradford, Landry Jones in his time at Oklahoma, just extensive experience. So really um a slam dunk and i think a very very smart use of all these resources we keep hearing the rams athletic department has well they put their money where they're literally where their mouth is no more fooling around no more eh, maybe this pac-12 oc will work maybe this pro oc will work maybe this other you know no we got a guy who we know translates pretty uh pretty well to mountain west football i think you nailed it i mean i just I love that aspect of the hire. It's not a guy that has to come in and and figure out the nuances of playing Boise state and air force. He's done it. You know, he has wins over Boise state. He's beaten air force. He's beaten a top ranked San Diego state team. And I mean, they were, they, they had three conference losses this year by a combined six points to air force, Fresno state and San Diego state, all of which three really good teams. They're a small handful of plays away from being, you know, 10 and two, potentially 11 and one winning the conference being, you know, maybe in the conversation for a New Year's Six type bowl, like their season, it, it it really was very close to being different. And he's a proven winner. You know, CS. <laughs> we were the other thing we were talking about before this podcast, and you mentioned it is CSU finally gets to be like, look, we do have the resources. It's not just us being, you know, hey, I I love CSU. You should love CSU too. <laughs> right? No. Like Fort Collins is a great college town. It is a great university. You have dynamite facilities, all of which are better selling points than recruiting to Reno. Reno's a fun little town. Like, yeah. no, no disrespect to Reno. You can have a good weekend there. But it's not, you know, an elite college location. Their mm-hmm. stadium is nothing to be excited about. Neither are their practice facilities. And now you're in a position where you pretty much triple their coach's salary. I mean, we don't have the numbers yet on right. that, but right. we got to guessing. assume it's gonna yeah. be at least double probably triple so i'm i'm pumped i know i'm all over the place here because i've I've said a lot of information in, in these first five minutes but i'm just excited that like, that's where my brain is going for the first time in a long time i feel like there's some hope with csu football mm-hmm. again because mm-hmm. let's be real when steve adazio was announced the hire was kind of like you know the reaction to the hire was just like ah 
really yeah. like all right hopefully it works out i guess you know he was in right. the acc maybe that translates you don't have to worry about any of that this time around no i mean that's and in a lot of ways i think <laughs> um you probably and some of your rams faithful must have felt like you guys were taking crazy pills and saying you know we have the best <laughs> best college town in the mountain west best facilities new stadium all this money invested and yet not much to show for now it was really like you know it it, it it kind of felt to a lesser extent what some of these bigger programs have done this year in the coaching carousel where it's like well if it's just a standard check of 100 mil for 10 years then i'll just go out and get my top choice or top five choice and that's what the Rams said like if i'm gonna have to give a dazio money to anyone well why not go to a guy that's making almost a third of that at nevada with half the resources and has proven he can give a much more exciting offense. He knows how to recruiting. Most of all, he knows how to figure out the quarterback. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of crossover with Broncos fans tuning in. I don't have to tell you after yesterday's game, how important the quarterback is in modern football. And to have a guy who you can, who can list off, Hey, you know, I called plays for a Heisman winner. I called plays for a, a potential first rounder in Carson strong. Um, and can just reference the kind of absurd stats that he's been able to put up in that air raid offense. I mean, it's just, it's going to be so easy to translate. And one of the most accomplished best wide receiving coaches in the nation as well. So you get to go back to being wide receiver, you, which, uh, that very nice synergy there, right. For the brand to sell that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a really underrated component of this is, Obviously, his his work with quarterbacks is big, but now you have a guy that can, you know, take advantage of some of this talent that CSU has been able to recruit over the last decade at the skill position. If you're Dante Wright and you're sitting here thinking, do I really want to come back for another year of an Adazio offense? They, you know, they did their part to get him the ball at the end of the season when he was finally healthy, right. but right. that just wasn't an offense that was conducive to his style. It, it didn't put him in a position to where he could attack the defenses. I mean, He's a guy in his first career game. We saw him come out and just torch opposing defenses for long touchdowns right. that whole first month in 2019. You know, I want to see more of that. You know, Dante Wright torch and see you down the field. Mm -hmm. You have skill, you have talent. Yeah. Norvell is the kind of guy that can come in and, and optimize that. I mean, I can't help but think, you know, what if Trey McBride had gotten to play in an air raid offense? How many touchdowns mm -hmm. would he have had? A lot more than one, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And then the other thing I love is, um, look, I, I, I'm as much of a fan of play in the trenches as anyone, and I thought that was a big selling point for Adazio. You uh, still have, and, and it still matters. Like I, I do want to add that in. You know, I'm, I'm not saying winning the trenches doesn't matter. Watch any college football; it's, it plays a factor. Hundred percent. But let's face it: if you're not in the SEC or Big Ten you are getting the leftovers, the, the four and three star leftovers in the trenches. Um, and so you, you need to be aces on the perimeter. That's where you need to live and breathe and make your money. And Jay Norvell is one of the brightest air raid minds we have in the college game right now. He's going to be, a, he, he's going to be a monster. He's going to force you to live on the perimeter and you're going to be pretty miserable about it on a regular basis. So, you got to love that. I think from a recruiting standpoint, that's probably going to line a little better um, than Agreed. what you had yeah. with Daz, where you really were going to have to count on transfer old linemen and some, I mean, some hardy work in the trenches in developing those guys. And that's probably more of a long term fix, let's face it. And, and then you got to love Norvell's uh, the territories he's been. He's a Midwest guy, Iowa, Chicago Bear. Madison, Wisconsin guy. He starts his career in, in, you know, Wisconsin, Iowa state, but then, you know, he's been in the big 12. He's been at UCLA. He's coached out West Arizona state and now Nevada. It's just, uh, I mean, that is, that is one hell of a resume right there. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you look at this list here, I think there's a lot to be encouraged about. You mentioned all the different stops familiarity in the PAC 12, the big 10, the big 12, six years in the NFL, you know, so he can sell that to recruits as, you know, I've been there. I know what they're looking for. I have those connects. Yeah. It's going to help even more. So this year with Carson strong and Romeo dubs and Cole Turner getting the, 
the the attention that they're getting throughout the draft cycle and well deserved. Yes, but I just I, I like that he's worked with wide receivers. I like that he has a his, he's a proven quarterback developer, and mm-hmm. he can see the ball from both sides. I mean, he played defensive back at Iowa. Yep. I, I, it's just an experienced guy, a guy that's been coaching for multiple decades now. Only one stop as a head coach, but I I do think that having success as a head coach it mattered like it, it clearly did Holy in this cow. search as as much as csu fans want to clamor for tony alford and i get it i would have been excited to see a guy like tony alford get a shot especially given his recruiting experience but the reality is there's a lot of good position coaches that don't you know they're not good ocs they're not good head coaches they they can work with you individually they can go out and recruit but schematically x and x's and o's it's it's a completely different game and you have a guy that's already proven it. I just, I think considering where CSU is at in terms of the landscape of college football changing, and, and you have to turn this program around quickly, like within the next yeah, couple of yeah. years. It's a key window it right It just now. would have been such a big gamble yeah. to go out and hire a guy that's never even been an offensive coordinator. 100%. I mean, the only other hire that would have come to be as close to as safe as this would have been bringing McElwain back. And we've talked about how prickly and potentially that, that, that was a lot closer to happening this time than it ever was in the past. He did mm-hmm. contact CSU, wanted to come back to CSU. I don't know if those bridges are ever going to be able to be repaired, but interesting that it worked out that way. If you're not going to bring McElwain back, though, you Absolutely. know, Norvell's probably the best other option in terms of college head coaches that you could go out and poach. You know, there were some fun names. Clint Kubiak would have been awesome. You and I both think he's going to be an NFL head coach, so he probably never really had a chance. But I just think out of the guys that you realistically could have pulled in, this was about as good of a hire as CSU could have hoped for, at least on paper. I mean, obviously, you never know how any of these things are going to pan out five years from now, but on paper, they nailed this home run. If we're being realistic, I don't think something like I didn't think I wouldn't have guessed something like this was in the works, was possible. Um, because, you know, you look at the off field stuff, the move makes a lot of sense. And I mean, you know, Jay's doing the, the Johnny Manziel this morning because he definitely at least, uh, doubled his, uh, doubled his yearly salary, which is not, not bad at all, but it, you are leaving a, a winning program that you've established and created some roots for a losing program that look, I mean, we've. We've talked about this many times, Justin. This isn't a quick fix. This isn't a, oh, I, you know, I can see it. Like, first things first, he's going to have to figure out the quarterback. Todd Centeno is not a Jay Norvell type quarterback. Please correct me if I'm mispronouncing his last name, by the way. Um, no, you're, you got it right. And, you know, so you're going to have to figure out the quarterback right away. You're, And this is the other thing. When you have a lot of turnaround in your coaching staff, Every year you make that coaching change, you might as well count it as a lost year in recruiting. Um, and so, you know, I mean, Das was only there two years. Das was only there two years. Bobo, you know, was losing momentum towards the end of his cycle anyways. So there was a, he's going to be way behind the eight ball on the recruiting side. It'll be interesting what he's able to find on the transfer portal, what kind of recruits he's able to flip. Um you know, and I'll be really interested to see what kind of uh, recruiting territories he hits up and how he builds his staff. Because the DC hire, of course, becomes kind of the the next thing we're really looking forward to, right? Yeah, I mean, you got to assume that, that Norvell is going to be the one calling the plays. I mean, he was yes. at Nevada, yes. so it, you know, why wouldn't you? He's the guy that's come over. He's Absolutely. already proven it. The DC yeah. hire is probably going to matter more than the OC hire, although I will say if they can bring Mummy over there with him, mm. if he doesn't end up end up getting promoted or poached somewhere else i think that would be a great decision but just as far as the recruiting side goes it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it all plays out obviously he has ties strong ties in texas and southern california which is you know those are the two places that you have to be able to recruit especially at if you're csu and cu locationally you know southern california because of all of the california schools out there and that's yeah. really where he made his bread and butter at nevada which makes sense given you know the location totally. of reno totally. bringing a bunch of la guys but you know hopefully you can get some of them out here and if not you know maybe you explore the transfer portal and, and you can bring in a quarterback we're actually going to get to some qb talk here in just a second real quick though 
something to keep in mind for our homeowners with prices going up, it's creating natural equity in your home. If you have mortgage insurance, chances are you can refinance out of that, make the bubble work for you. If you're in the buyer's market, like my friend uh, Jay Norville is now, you yeah. know how stressful it is trying to buy a house right now. He's going to find out coming out to Colorado, trying to buy a house. It's crazy. He should work with my friends, Mike and Virginia Chevalier, so they can take the burden off of this extremely difficult process. They're going to alleviate so much stress. Just take some of that worry off of everyone's plate. They've got a fun perk for DNVR listeners. If you go to dnvrmortgage.com, you can enter to win a free DNVR shirt or hat. Most importantly, get set up with a free consultation. That's dnvrmortgage.com. You can also call Mike directly at 970-412-2472. Or again, go to dnvrmortgage.com. Michael Chevalier, NMLS 1931006. Virginia Chevalier, NMLS number 1910631. All right, shout out Mike to our Virginia friend, Mike and Virginia would take good care of him for sure. I guarantee. Oh, you. absolutely. They, they, <laughs> there's anyone he should work with. I don't know if anyone at CSU is listening. Truly, hit right. up the Chevaliers. Let's make this process green carpet so yes. he can get out there and <laughs> yes. hit the ground recruiting. Like we've got bigger things That's to right. worry about. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, tell but, uh, Jay, they'll they'll tell you they'll they'll uh they'll start to look for homes for your uh, your staff. You know, you want that next DC, uh, Mike and Virginia. They got you covered. We need our best people on this, guys. If, if CSU is going <laughs> to really return do. to prominence, really do. prominence. Yeah. Excuse me. It takes a it takes a team effort. It takes a village to build this thing up. That's we are right. all We're playing our part. parts today. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I want to talk about quarterbacks though, because obviously, I mean. Being able to find a quarterback, develop a quarterback, that's going to be probably what determines if CSU is able to kind of turn things around quicker, you know, the next year or two. They've got a pretty yeah. favorable home slate next year, so there is an opportunity if you can keep, you know, most of the talent you have in place, add a couple of pieces in to, you know, at least contend for a bowl game. We'll have to see. I don't want to get too ahead of myself or anything like yes. that, but... Yes. When you when you look at the work he's done, obviously at Oklahoma is really impressive with Sam Bradford, but the the quarterbacks at Nevada in particular, Carson Strong, sixty eight percent passer, almost ten thousand yards, seventy four touchdowns, only nineteen interceptions. Yeah. Ty Ganji before that, sixty percent, six thousand seventy seven yards, forty nine touchdowns, and twenty four interceptions. Before Norvell, only right. thirteen hundred one yards, seven touchdowns, six interceptions. So. They, wow. they bring in Ganji, and all of a sudden he starts throwing about three times as many touchdowns. Now, his interceptions mm-hmm. went way up, too, but that's just because they were throwing the football a hell of a lot more in the air yeah. raid. If you remember back to 2017, there was actually a thriller between that Ty Ganji-led Nevada offense against the Nick Stevens-led CSU offense. One of the very few fun moments that there have actually <laughs> been in Canvas Stadium was that Nevada thriller, oh. actually. Um that's a completely separate topic. Hopefully, you know, he can come in and bring some of this. But the thing that I like is that quarterbacks get better under Jay Norville. At least yes. that's what the stats have shown at Nevada. It was the small sample size of Arizona State in one year. So you can't really, I mean, he was the passing game coordinator there, but they played three right. different quarterbacks. Still finished the year averaging 260 passing yards a game, 60%, about a one and a half passing mm-hmm. touchdowns. But these Nevada quarterbacks, man, they thrived under him. And it, it's been a while now. It, it's weird to say, like, going from Garrett Grayson to Nick Stevens, I think CSU fans, they kind of took it for granted, you know, what yeah. having a competent quarterback is and how important it is to your success at this level. They finally have a coach who can kind of put CSU back in that position again. And I think Bobo could have been that guy. I mean, obviously, Colin Hill's career and the injuries and all that, it's not really fair to place that on him. But from a from a QB standpoint, you've got to be excited. You have to be excited. And this this is an offense that just feels more translatable than Bobo. And I mean, if you were to compare Bobo's track record with quarterbacks as um, you know, uh, coming in to CSU's job, you were talking about what, like Andy Murray. Um, yeah. You weren't talking Carson Strong. You weren't talking a Heisman winner. You weren't talking Jarvis Landry. That's a good point. It's a it, significant different tier. flash. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Different tier. Also showing. I mean, those stats tell me he can turn an average quarterback into a quarterback that puts up numbers. And he can turn a good quarterback into a great quarterback, into an elite quarterback that's must-see TV. And Justin, 
you reference the stats and the improvements you can see, but we do this with the draft pod on a weekly basis. Something you and I most of all have talked about Carson Strong's improvement from last year to this year, his ability to alternate touch and zip, how he was a little too uh too touch centric, too, too uh too obsessed with lofting the ball and getting it under those talented wide receivers. And this year he's been a lot better, a lot more decisive. Uh, picking his spots, when to zip it into traffic, really reading that RPO type of thing well, you know, and reading that defender and getting it out quick, um, kind of sp sped himself up. Was And already Carson Strong was coming off a phenomenal season, but then showed some real improvements this year, and that's in a much tougher schedule where you have non-conference, uh, a longer schedule, and dealing with, away crowds as well which uh in in many cases we've seen offensive numbers go down not the case in jay norvell's offense this year um so you know even the eye test matches up as well not not to mention uh the guys we talked about at oklahoma never were able to reach those highs again you know um so it's a great point i mean it's kind of like garrett grayson under jim McElwain. i mean if you knew you saw early yeah this guy he, he's got something we can work with this and then in 2013, you're like, all right, you know, he's a really good right. college quarterback. Yeah. And by 2014, you're, you know, he ended up being a third round pick. I think the fourth yeah. quarterback taken that year. Mm -hmm. You just need to progress each and every year. You need to get better. And yeah. I, I don't see Todd Senseo being a fit in this system. We'll see. Not a quarterback. No. <laughs> Maybe as an H back, but not a quarterback. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think there's, there's, Big work to be done on the recruiting yeah. front, and I'll be curious yes. to see: Do they go the transfer portal route? Do they go the JUCO route? Yeah. Do they end up pulling somebody late in this recruiting cycle? Jake McNamara is still committed to Colorado State, son, uh, younger brother of the Michigan quarterback, mm -hmm. so that's encouraging. Yeah. I got to imagine he's looking at this now and's like, "Hell yeah, I'm coming to Colorado State. Right. They're gonna air it out now." Right. Yeah. No, it should make. I mean, it should make things uh, much more appealing. And again, you know, it's just translatable. Like there, there are more spread and air raid quarterbacks in high school than not. So when you yeah, they're present, easier to find, right? When you present a system that's going to be easier for them to translate, well, yeah, they should and more appealing. Jump right on board, exactly. Yeah, more appealing because you'll be able to put up more stats. It's more entertaining. That's the other like uh, Fort Fun. Fort Fun might be back. Like this actually might bring some real entertain before the wins come. I think you might have some exciting six and five teams where it's like, shit, we might put a 50 burger on anyone. If you're not winning, you have to at least be exciting as a college football team. And that's what Mike Bobo had going for him early. And that's what, you know, those first three years, it was like, you want to know what we're close, but you know, we're losing 49, 45. Like we can live with it. We're so close to being over the hump. These last couple of years, not only has CSU been losing, they've just been a brutal product to watch. It's, you yes. know, I, I can't yes. blame people for not wanting to show up to that season finale. Like, as desperate as we all were for college football, I can't blame people for being like, you want to know what? I'd rather do anything else than watch this team on a Saturday night. And I agree with you. I, I think he can come in, he can get some excitement back. Like, it's clear that the students will support a good product. Look at Moby Arena right now and, and CSU men's basketball. It's an yeah. absolute blast. You have the stadium, you have the facilities. I mean, it. Mm -hmm. I can see it now, you know, two and a half years from now, Canvas Stadium sold out. You're playing a division game that actually matters. Right. And, you know, you get that big win and all of a sudden it's like, man, we're back. We're here. Now it's going to be a process. You know, yes. they're going to have to recruit. We'll see how much roster turnover there ultimately ends up being because there's always going to be some. Always. Always. It doesn't matter if it's the most likable yes. coach in the world. It's like some Ooh. guys are just going to be, you know, especially some Adazio guys, you know, they're yeah. just going to say, screw it. I don't want to be here. That's part of the process. But yep. the flip side is maybe Norvell brings some guys with him too. I mean, exactly. you never know. We, we saw Blake Anderson at Utah State bring his best two players and Justin Rice. And uh, I'm trying to blank on the quarterback's name right now. Um Anyways, he brought them both over, yeah. you know, and, and that was basically what allowed them to go to the Mountain West Championship. Right. Some of that could happen. Like, it, it's just tough to project at this point, but I just, yeah. I will say that and w w my long-winded point through all of this is there's just a lot of reasons to be optimistic again. 
And that's that hasn't been the case in a half decade. 100%. And I do think this man's track record in this region, in this conference, A, it gives you so much more positive momentum than Adazio ever had going in. Um, and here you see him face to face with Adazio, what Jay Norvell did. Look at those Rams. offensive numbers against CSU. My they God. lost that 2017 shootout. But they still put 42 points on the board and had like 23 first downs that night, 500 plus yards of offense. Since then, 49 10, 52 to 10 win. Yeah. Goodness. And there's, I mean, there's the fun for you. Even when they lose, they lose scoring 42 points. And, um, you know, obviously I still have that Broncos game fresh in my mind, but, and, and even that Georgia Alabama championship, but those two games to me are so emblematic of a real problem that's haunted CSU football under Adazio. And it haunts a lot of these old school football programs. You are so tied to doing everything right. Every third down matters. Every penalty matters. Everything matters. You need to be so perfect in your execution. While offenses like Jay Norvell, offenses like the Kansas City Chiefs, like the Alabama uh, Tide, have found out in this era of modern football that all those little mistakes can be made up for pretty easily if we can just regularly generate big plays. That's where we're making up those, those little margins we're losing. We're making them up in big chunks here, there, everywhere, because our offense is explosive. And we're we're not worried about a three and out because we know we can hit we can hit a 50-yard bomb on the very next play, on the very next drive. And that's where you live. Um, and I mean, it's just it's it's kind of flipped the math on football where that that old school mentality used to matter. Now, if you're not able to keep pace with those big plays, you're kind of screwed. You're just not going to be able to, to stay in the race long enough. Um, well, look at Georgia. All year, going. they leaned yes, on that yes, ground game yes. in a defensive effort. And yes. as soon as they go down double digits and have to rely on everything through the air, yeah. they couldn't keep up with Alabama. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, in Alabama, on the flip side, they're like, you want to know what? Either Jamison Williams is going to break this and we're going to get 40 yards or he's going to house it or we're going to get a pass interference call. Yeah. It's the same deal with this Nevada offense. I mean, and you can look at CSU's defense. How many times this year did our DBs get flagged down the field for pass interference? When you have an offense that puts themselves in position to take advantage of the rules, to take advantage of the, the positive momentum you can create with those big plays, yeah. Yeah. it just erases a whole lot of bad you know like or not even yes. bad it, it's yes. just kind of one of those where it's, if you hit a couple of those a game it completely breaks it open Damn whereas straight. you know like you said with csu they might have 30 minutes of possession they might have no turnovers they might have 25 first downs right but if they don't score touchdowns in the mm -hmm. red zone it's not going to yeah. matter if they don't if they're not perfect it's not going to matter because they gave up three big plays that all went for points the other way and then they just couldn't outscore them when you have an offense like this, when you have a coach like this, yeah. especially in college football where it's the wild, wild west, mm -hmm. it just gives you such a better chance because there's going to be weird games. There's going to yeah. be games where you're, you know, you throw a couple of picks and when you're a team like Nevada, it only takes one play to get back in it. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, and I think, you know, it's a historical hire as well. And the way Adazio's, uh, tenure started, um, you know, just with some of the allegations and then that, the terrible thing that happened to that one uh, kid, you know, getting getting assaulted <laughs> for someone thinking he was Antifa. Nice to have some more representation um, in in the athletic department in the position that matters most. So, I think that's it's about time. I mean, yeah. Fort Collins CSU, it's a progressive community, but first POC to to lead this program. It's it's about time. I think it's yeah. it's great. You know, and I'm glad you brought that up as well. I mean, CSU as a whole, CSU athletics needs to improve from a diversity standpoint. No doubt. This is a great step. I mean, it's the head football coach is the biggest representation of your athletic department. It's not yep. the athletic director. It's not, you know, 100%. Nico Medved's obviously up there right now because they're a top 25 program, but football is what pays the oh, bills, yeah. especially mm -hmm. in the Mountain West. So to, to do this, it's, it's significant and it's, it's positive and he's a cool dude. Like yeah. This doesn't necessarily translate to anything on the field. Nevada at Mountain West Media Days last summer, they were the, the conference preseason favorite. So they're obviously the bell of the ball. Everyone wants to talk to Jay Norvell. Everyone wants to talk to 
Carson Strong and Romeo Dubs. You know, they want right. to talk to the exciting, of course. You know, flashy new team. Yeah, the headline getters, yes. Yeah. So, you know, me, I'd, I'd never met them before, but I'm in the scrum. Didn't really get as, as much of an opportunity during their allotted TV time, mm -hmm. which was about a half an hour to get in all the questions I want. Jay noticed this, steps off to the side with me, gives me 20 minutes one-on-one, -on -one, wow. just talks with me about football, Carson Strong, what they're trying to improve, other teams in the Mountain West. And I just thought to myself, you know, considering Adazio didn't even show up in person. No. <laughs> like, what a difference in character and just overall personality. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. he, he was such a cool dude. And Carson Strong was a cool dude, too. But I'm really excited because I think this is a guy, I think he's charming. I think he's bright. And I just think it gives people a reason to be proud again. It's that smash mouth football. When it works, it's great. Yeah. But like you said, it just, you had to be perfect. It's not very exciting. Hey, you got to build it the from the ground up. On the plays wasn't very likable. So you improve on yeah. all of those fronts. Yeah. Well, and I mean, what you just described to me is not too different from some of the experiences I've had interacting with like Troy Calhoun or, um, Craig Bull, though Craig Bull has also <laughs> been a little prickly with me sometimes, which, hey, yeah, that, <laughs> that's on me also. He's funny, though. Um, like, he's one of those that'll make you laugh even while he's being prickly. Yes. Uh, but uh, they're guys that get it. They're guys that get being the face of a program where maybe you don't have all the resources in the world, where maybe you don't have the shield of a Power Five conference and a big brand like Florida or BC even to hide behind and protect you that you got to stand on your own two feet and you know, you just got to be in an open book and you love that. And I do think, I do think that's a major change in this, you know, the guys they hired previously all from power five programs and all with a bit of a different attitude of their shit didn't stink. Um, which I, as a media member, anytime I need to deal with a power five program, that's always a bit aggravating that they always seem to think. And you got that from some of those coaches, right? There was no, a little bit of it's spot on a little power five bouginess. And uh, Jay does not have that though. Again, Jay was an OC in power five conferences from 04 to 2014. So there's 10 years as an OC at places like, um, you know, UCLA, UCLA, and Nebraska, Nebraska. U, Texas, yeah. all over. Right. So, uh, you know, a guy who he I'm sure dues, is, man. He's a yeah. guy I think that understands what this opportunity means. I mean, he's getting a significant bump in support and resources and facilities, yeah. Yeah. but he's not a guy that's going to come in here who thinks, you know, I'm one year on the job. I'm going to flip this thing and I'm going to be out and I'm going to be, you know, at Oklahoma state or whatever. You know, right. he's, he, he understands the landscape of the league. He understands what it takes to win in this league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more I think about it, the the more I oh, I love this hire. Like I I think I'd give it an A. I I don't think you could do totally. a whole lot better. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, really, <laughs> really, it's it's the rare slant. I I could have never dreamed of a hire like this when we were uh, contemplating is Adazio out? Is Adazio in? When this was the alternative, it wasn't Adazio out a, a gajillion times over. Um, you would always take Jay Norvell. Over at Ozio, plain and simple. Um, going into this, though, Justin, what would you say? Now, and I think we've just stated the case of why this man deserves some real like leg room. Give him you time. Some, you got to give him some time. To put, give him two right. years. See where we're at two years from now yes. after 24 yes. games. Yes. And just remember, every situation is different. Just because he turned the offense around the first year at Nevada and then they started winning by year two doesn't mean it's going to be exactly like that in Fort Collins. Should we close with me asking you, coming into this, what are the things you'll be monitoring most closely? And what are the things that kind of with a, trying to have a little foresight could be the biggest obstacles in Jay Norvell having success as a Ram? That's a really good question. Um, in terms of what I'm going to be monitoring the most closely, obviously, I think roster the dc higher and roster and, and the D dc higher are probably the most significant who you retain you know keeping guys like dante Wright, i think are going to be massively important gary williams for being able to you know flip this thing right away you know can you 
convince some of these other guys that we're going to leave to maybe stay EJ Scott and Barry Wesley both have another year of eligibility. Can you convince them to stay potentially like right. Right. that type of stuff is going to be interesting to me, but I think the defensive coordinator hire who he brings in as his offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach would yes. be my guess yeah. because he's right. going to be the play caller. I would assume, I mean, obviously you don't, you can make an ass out of you and I by assuming, right. but right. It, it would make the most logical sense, at least going in in terms of, what could prevent him from having success? Not having the right guy, I think, to fit his system specifically at quarterback yeah. could be tough. Yeah. The offensive line depth could be a little bit tricky if they end up losing a lot of these guys that came yeah. in. I, you know, being able to convince the Cam Reddies of the world to stick around, that'll right. be big. Playing devil's advocate, I, you know, where are a lot of these guys going to go if they're not staying at CSU? Yeah. The transfer portal is completely logged with hundreds right. of thousands of players just like you like that's right you know you, you could very easily end up in Greeley if, if you choose to not stick mm -hmm. around so yeah. that'll be kind of interesting but yeah I think the the defensive coordinator hire and what ultimately happens at the quarterback position are the most interesting things to monitor the next couple of months is Todd Santeo QB1 when spring ball uh, rolls around I, believe it or not, I know you were happy to have a break from football season. Now, kind of can't wait to Back. see that off. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're, we're full in football mode. It was a lovely oh, right. four days. And even then it was surrounded with like coaching rumors and me having to That's talk right. to sources and hoping to, to find this one. I will say this, this came together really quickly. I got a text around 730 last night, basically saying Norvell's the guy. I was like, all right, like we'll see how this plays out the next couple of days. And by 9 a.m. this morning, there's already national guys, you know, hey, yeah. it's it's happening. I'm sure that's Jay's agent, you know, pushing it to them, you know, right, this right, is right. happening. But but before we go, I, I'm just kind of curious. Are you worried at all that they rushed it? Because, you know, this came together in, in five days. It's It's tough to say that considering how much we just gushed about the hire. But you and I made the point on our last pod when Adazio was fired as important as it is to hit the ground running and trying to stack up recruits. Gotta get it's it. It's right. basically a lost yeah. year anyways. And yep. so I getting the right hire matters more than salvaging oh, this recruiting yes. class. hundred percent. Not knowing anything. <clears throat> you are the source guy. I'm just here. I'm just the guy who watches lots of football, giving his opinions here. Um, I get the feeling with how the timing worked out. They had an idea, an opening like this was there. Um, and that this was their top choice. And that this hire was kind of semi-vetted and in their minds already. Um, had Jay not taken it, I think maybe it would have been a more open hiring process and time to feel people out a little more and um kind of you know check your p's and q's this feels like we identified our guy we moved quickly and believe it or not we got it so boom kind of a done deal ladies and gentlemen we've got him uh, yeah yes yeah. he's got the guy um before we go, just real quick, though, football fans, I'm sure we all love an action-packed, high-scoring NFL game Ooh. with the latest no-brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. You'll be a winner once a single point is scored. New customers who bet just $1 on any team to score can win $100 in free bets. It's that simple, guys. You can also get some skin in the game Easy. with the same game parlay. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. Feeling like Jay Norville after a big contract with CSU. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw that cash whenever you want. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use that promo code DNVR. Bet $1 on any team to score. Win 100 in free bets. If they score, you score with the promo code DNVR. This week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only. New customers only. Restrictions to apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. I, you know, I think we've pretty much given our gut reaction in terms of mm -hmm. this hire and, and how we feel about it. I'll continue to talk about it, obviously. Yes. In depth, you know, my, I've been all over the place on this podcast. And part of that is just, I'm excited. I'm excited for the first time in a while when it comes to CSU. And I had a, 
had a lot of things I wanted to to say. We did have some questions on Twitter that briefly we can go through. We already answered yeah. most of them, but think Santeo is Norvell's guy or he will try to find a Juco transfer, juicy offense. Santeo, from what we've seen, is not an air raid quarterback. Now, they may not necessarily go to that air raid in year one if they don't have the right fit for it right off the bat. No. That would be unfortunate in terms of trying to establish and get things rolling over these next couple of years. I think kind of establishing the the footprints of your offense or the blueprint, you know, and, and getting it going is going to be important. But yeah, Santeo only has one year of eligibility left, too. So it's one of those questions too like where else would he go i guess so i would i hope he sticks around even if he doesn't end up being the guy just having a a quarterback that's played on the roster is is valuable in that right in that sense right yeah it is valuable um he just isn't an air raid quarterback unfortunately i mean point blank period and that is one thing where in the transition these are pretty polar opposite offensive schemes um adazio to norvell so starting with the quarterback but i mean the offensive lineman you were mentioning and you know potential potential other positions as well um you you could see some real changeover we've got another question from the account at is McMahon fired talking about tom mcmahon broncos special teams coordinator how likely is it a p5 coach all right, P5 poaches Norvell within a few years if he has CSU if he has CSU winning consistently. Sorry, that was a tough one to read. Also, what is his personality type relative to Daz Bobo? Uh, could not be more different from a Dazio. I will say yeah. I've only spent, you know, 25 minutes with the guy, so I don't want to act like I'm best friends or anything sure, like sure. that. Right. Very personable. Everybody that I've ever talked to about him has only had positive things to say. Uh, Craig Bull respects the hell out of him. And that's like actual respect, not the type of respect you mentioned post game when you're saying, yeah, other coaches around the league, they like me. They like me. I don't need to say it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, interesting way to defend yourself. If he, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they do like you when they're yeah, beating no, you. No, <laughs> I know. I, it was hard for me not to laugh during the press conferences when some of those, oh, like, this close, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Regardless, uh, I got completely, I lost my, my train of track there. P5. If a P5 school poaches Jay Norvell, that means CSU is winning. And while it sucks and it's the unfortunate reality of being a mid-major program, you always have that in the back of your mind. Hey, are we going to get poached? The reality was CSU could not make this decision based on, is he going to stay for a decade though? You hope so. Whoever you hire, if they're winning, you hope so. But it is what it is. If you get poached, it means you're winning, and that means that this program is in a better position than it is today. And I can live with that. And and obviously, it's it's hard if you're constantly having to replace your coach. But if you're doing it every five, six years, four, five, six years, you can win that way sustainably yeah. even. You just have to hire the right guys. And mm-hmm. I'm I'm hoping that Norvell's sixth round. I'm hoping he works out. If he was the CSU coach for the next 15 years and they won a bunch Amazing. of championships and he took right. him to the Big 12, hell yeah, sign me up for that. If he ends up dipping, though, you know, it is what it is. It's just the business. Well, and how likely do you think it is? I mean, next two years, jeez. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I don't think he he's turns this for anything. He turns this thing around in two years and he's jumping to a P5. The Rams were ranked. The Rams were ranked by 2022. That's a good point because he's not, you know, he's not getting an Oklahoma State job with an eight and four season. It, you know, no. it'd be 10 and two, 11 and one yeah. in the top 25. Yeah, I think you're spot in, on. In two years? Yeah, come. On. No, and this guy's 58. And, and we, we just told you 04 to 2014, an OC everywhere from Nebraska to UCLA to Oklahoma as they're winning natties and BCS championships and pumping out um, Heisman's. After those jobs, he wasn't getting more OC jobs. He was getting bumped down to being a wide receiver coach, passing game coordinator. Finally, just three years ago, gets his first head coaching job at Nevada, where he's making half a million a year. Um, what you know, uh, resources wise, one of the lower G five programs out there. So this guy, 
we're excited about him. His resume speaks for itself. This isn't a guy that's like, oh, he's like Scott Frost at UCF. Like, oh, yeah, in two years. That's a great point. He's, he's not. Jump. He knows like he's coming in thinking, wow, this place has great facilities. What an opportunity this is. Yeah, if right. I could accomplish everything I just right. accomplished, imagine what I could do against the same competition with all of these weapons now in my right. corner, with all of these resources at my disposal. When Mike Bobo came into Fort Collins, his attitude was that I'm going to keep winning off of what now obviously was a different situation, you know, coming off of McIlwain. But his mindset was, I'm going to come in, I'm going to win, and two, three years from now, I'm out, and I'm going to take an SEC job. Right. Now, his attitude changed relatively quickly, you know, relatively quickly once the, the losses started to pile up. But mm. that was his mindset. I, I got to feel like Norvell's coming in thinking like, it, this could be what I'm known for is right. turning around Colorado state and making this a championship contender. Right. Right. It's a, it's a much different, like I've been coaching 25 years to get here to get yeah. to this uh, point to like, Oh, well five years in, I'm already the hottest coordinator in the game. Can't wait to like get, hop on out of here in a couple of years, you know, and make five times this. Um, it's, it's much different. It's I mean, obviously to, money talks. Somebody could come in and steal him. You know, if somebody, you know, if they're winning a ton again, and you know, somebody comes in, they like, have you know, to we're going to throw 5 ton. million a year yes. at him. There's nothing CSU can do in that yep. scenario. Right. Right. And I mean, let's think of some of the connections he has, uh, Venables, former DC when he was at Oklahoma, now current head coach at Oklahoma. Well, He's not leaving to become the OC at a power five. He's done that like Been there, 10 years ago. He was done. Yeah. So he's not Kevin Wilson, another guy. Well, he's the OC at Ohio State. That he doesn't have any job openings for Jay unless things go terribly. Josh Heupel, uh, head coach at Tennessee. Again, he's not going to join Heupel's staff. He's trying to be the man of his staff. So just looking around, I don't see it's not like, you know this isn't a Bobo McElwain situation. It's, it's significantly different. Yeah. I just, I feel like you just, you got to feel good. I mean, you got a great candidate. You have a guy who fits culturally. You have a guy who is familiar with your league. He's up and coming. You know, you're not hiring a 75 year old coach, mm -hmm. but you're also hiring a guy with a ton of experience at multiple yeah. levels, multiple conferences coached in the NFL pretty much a perfect scenario i mean I, on paper we'll see how it plays out again but on paper this is the best hire that, that csu's made in a while yep now go find a quarterback in a dc let's get this thing rolling simple as that let's get this thing rolling again thank you to everybody that tuned in again i will do a more podcast where my yes. my thoughts are a little bit more concise and I'm, I'm a little bit you know less all over the place but for right now it's exciting times to be a Ram, you know, CSU 26 and basketball. You went out and you poached one of the best coaches in your conference and you, and you kept him. That's exciting. Exciting stuff for CSU. Brighter days are ahead. Thank you to everybody that continues to keep up with their content. We will be back throughout the week with more Rams podcasts. Make sure you're keeping up on the podcast feed and with the written content. Cause obviously there's just going to be a ton of stuff for all our DNVR members. I'm Justin Michael, Andre Simone. Thank you for joining me on this emergency pod. Much love, Ram Nation. Enjoy this one.